<coughs> so I've had a lot of requests on how to make my apron jig that I show in a lot of my previous videos where I'm making table bases. So the apron jig cuts a shallow arc to fit the stopped mortises in the legs. And this makes a very fast and efficient joinery method. So I combine pocket hole joinery with the shallow mortise for production table making. So here's some materials to make a jig. You need well, I made these mortises already using a 6 inch dado blade. Dados come in two sizes, 6 inch and 8 inch. And my previous jig was for 8 inch. And then this one is going to be for 6. And I'm going to do some improvements on this. So here's a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. A hardwood stick that's plain to the exact same thickness of the plywood. Then a couple scrap blocks for setup. And that's pretty much it. So here's my table saw over here. I have the six inch blade mounted in it. And I just had it set up to cut three eighths inch deep mortises. That's the depth that I always use. Um, so I'm just gonna make some test cuts. This is the setup block one. So the blade is raised three eighths of an inch high and that is going to be the profile right there that I'm trying to match. So I, I'm actually going to use this at the very end to test the fit. And this next setup block is going to be used to actually match the profile for the jig. So I'm actually raising the blade up about another quarter inch or so it's not really critical, it just needs to be a little bit taller. And so I'm going to make another cut. And so I'm making the profile oversized, and I'll explain why I'm going to do that later. But that's what I'm going to use to match the hardwood stick, and that's going to be used to make the jig. So here's the piece of hardwood, it's cherry and I'm just going to join the square edge on the joiner and that's going to be the glue surface that's going to go up against the plywood. So now I have to trace the pattern of that arc on that second test setup block. So I'm going to line that up right where that arc stops and I'm going to use some spring clamps to secure that on. And it's kind of difficult to uh, trace it with a pencil. Um, I ended up breaking the lead a bunch of times doing this, but did the best I could. Um, so now that you have that, that pattern there, I'm going to cut that out. I'll start on um, the table saw to cut that strip out, and then I'll do the rest of the shaping on my sander. So this cut has to be somewhat accurate here. Trying to cut it just before that pencil line. I guess I'm going to just do a little adjustment here. Alright, so I got an 80 grit belt on my edge sander and I'm just going to hog off the uh, bulk of it right here. So this part takes a little bit of skill Having the right machine to do this really helps. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I mean, I could shape this freehand if I really had to, but... Now 
Alright, so I'm going to do a test fit here, that second setup block. You can see it just had a little bit more to go. I just got to fine tune it just a wee bit. Yeah, now that fits pretty good. So that's a very good profile match. So I'm ready to glue that piece on now. First I'm going to check my plywood block for square because the factory edges on plywood are often a little bit off. So I'm going to do a taper cut on my joiner. So I'm just joining the one side to do a very very slight taper just to make sure that I have a square corner. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll just mark that with the square mark. And now I'm going to make a 3 8 inch mark where it intersects that arc that I just cut. And this, this mark has to be very, very accurate, so I have to make that measurement very carefully and add the thickness of the pencil lead because that 3 8 measurement has to coincide with the depth of the mortises. So now I'm going to use a straight edge to see where those two lines intersect and that's going to give me the correct position. So the reason for making this profile oversized is to give me an extra starting point with the router because if I just stopped it right at a sharp corner, the router bit bearing will start to wear that corner a little bit over time, and then it'll it'll start to make uh, take off too much material on the corner. And so by making that arc a little bit oversized, uh, it gets a better, cleaner cut. So now I have that glued on. I'm going to let that set for 30 minutes or so. And that's almost done at this point, but that's the hard part, is to make that arc and line it up properly. Okay, ready to unclamp. So now I have a couple more scrap blocks. And these are going to be the fences for my jig. And I'm going to make a mark where the surface height of that plywood is. And I'm going to make a notch, just a saw kerf, where that mark is. And that's going to give chip clearance. I frequently do this extra step on the jigs that I make for drill presses and routers because the dust and debris that the, tool, the power tool makes will build up in the corners and that, that can create a reference error. So by making a little little kerf cut where that corner of the fence is uh, really helps to line up the work pieces and it saves time because you don't have to clean the chips off of the jig every time you use it. Oh, and by the way my grizzly switch problem came back, but I think I know what the problem is, so I'll be talking about that in another video. Stay tuned. So now I'm going to fasten the fence onto the plywood. And I'm just going to use screws, I'm not going to glue these on permanent and that's because they might need to be adjusted to fine-tune the fit later on so it, it's important to be able to take the fence off to do the adjustment so I just use a few screws in each piece 
I clamp it on in place first. And sometimes if I need to adjust the fence to make the cut a little bit fit tighter, then I can use a piece of tape, like electrical tape, uh, right onto the fence. But if I needed to make it smaller, I would have to trim a little piece off the fence and put it back on. So that's pretty much it. I just gotta cut off that extra piece at the end there and my jig will be complete. So now I just screw this right down to whatever workbench I'm using because using clamps will often obstruct the path of the router. So now I'm going to do my first test cut. I have a trim router for three quarter inch material. Most of my aprons are three quarter inch thick, but sometimes I do thicker material. Got to plug it in first. All right, so now I'll use that first setup block to do my final test fit. So I got a good intersection at the corner and the arc matches very very tightly. So that's a good fit on the first try. So here I'm putting an extension on the one part of my fence because I'm using a thicker apron making my aprons out of 2x4 framing material or actually 2x6 um, and so I have to raise that fence height a little bit for my reference and I'm just going to screw that right on um, so these aprons are for the benches that I just did in my previous preview video and I put a longer router bit on this so it's a two inch trim bit with the bearing at the end so this is by far the fastest way to mechanically create a mortise and tenon there are other ways to do it, but if you got 20 tables to build and stuff's got to get done, this is the method that works for me. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you'd like to recreate some of my project designs, I have them available for download on my website. I'll post a link in the description, and it's free to download. I post them without selling anything but donations are welcome if you'd like to donate but I'm happy to make the information available if you need to get started so you can make some money so happy woodworking and I will see you next time